The Ireland of prehistoric times was rich in native woodland. Oak, ash, elm and birch dominated the landscape. Today, less than 10% of Irish land is under forest. But that's changing. With the changing nature of farming and strong government support, forestry has become a real commercial choice for thousands of farmers all over Ireland. Forestry is a long-term enterprise. What you plant today will not be harvested for many years to come. So you must be sure that your farm forest is sustainable and that choosing to plant is economically, socially and environmentally the best decision for you. If you are considering forestry, this programme will take you through the three main areas you need to consider before you choose to plant. These are the effect of planting on your farm enterprise, the steps involved in obtaining pre-planting approval and the different options for getting the job done. The information in this programme will help you see the wood from the trees, putting you in a better position to make an informed decision about farm forestry. Even if you don't intend to do the work yourself, your plantation will be your responsibility and you need to have at least a basic knowledge of forestry before you begin. The first step is to go to a short Introduction to Forestry course. These courses are run by Chagas and the Forest Service and held throughout the country on a regular basis. Your local Chagas office will know when the next course is on in your area. You'll also need to find out how forestry is likely to impact on your existing farming practice and on your total farm and household income. A decision to plant part of your farm is a decision to try and maximise the income from the farming business. Now, the fact that you take some land out of agricultural production and put it into forestry is going to have a knock-on effect on the whole farming business, on the profitability of other enterprises and also on the various schemes and aids that are available there to the farming community such as the extensification premiums, the area-based compensatory allowance scheme, reps and the, also the early retirement scheme. All these should be looked at and taken into account before a final decision to plant forestry is made. It's very important. Because the government's plan for forestry seeks to increase our forest cover to 17% by 2030, there are attractive grants and annual premium payments available for planting land, subject to certain conditions. The Forest Service is the government body charged with promoting forestry development and administering the afforestation grants and premium scheme. The afforestation grant covers the costs associated with the establishment of your plantation and is payable after planting. A second instalment covers the cost of maintenance and is payable after a Forest Service inspection at the four-year stage. In addition, annual premium payments are payable for 20 years to farmers and for 15 years to non-farmers. Before you decide to plant, you should consult your Chagas Land Use Advisor to find out if you will qualify for the farmer rate of premium and to make sure that planting is economically viable for you. Well, Philip, it looks as if you're going to qualify all right. You have 27% of your income from farming. Right. So this, I'll, I'll sign this. Philip's decision to plant seems to make economic sense, but before he begins any work, he must obtain pre-planting approval. Philip must employ an approved forester to compile his application. A list of approved foresters is available through either Chagas or the Forest Service. You must hire a, a, an approved forester. These foresters have been approved by the Forest Service. Right. And I have a list of them here. OK. Um, so what you need to do is just pick the ones from your area and maybe contact them and right. see how you get on with them anyway. The approved forester will check that your land is capable of growing a commercial crop of timber and will advise on species suitability and fertiliser requirements. They will also check for environmental considerations and point out other factors that might affect your plan. So, a map of my farm and the rest. Yes, the, the first thing the Forest Service will look into when they get your application for uh, approval, they will check is there any environmental restrictions on your farm. Site inspections by representatives from your local authority, the Environmental Protection Agency or the Regional Fisheries Board may also be a requirement for certain applications. If a farmer is proposing to uh, plant, uh, it would be a very good idea for him to consult with the Regional Fisheries Board at an early stage. Our primary concerns are things like silt, fertilisers um, and proper planning of road networks 
silt traps and mound drains to ensure that nothing damages the, the water quality or the fish habitat. Well, I think it's important when the, uh, you know, the farmer is discussing with the approved forester that if there's anything present on the ground, any sort of potential sort of reason why an application may be refused, don't try and cover it up. Because what happens is if there is sites which have environmental considerations, we have to contact Dukas, we have to contact the local county council depending on size of plantation. A full disclosure of, of any um, possible things which are of interest in that particular farm will be most useful in speeding up their application. Once the approved forester is satisfied that your land is suitable for planting, they draw up the planting proposal for the site and submit it on your behalf. The proposal is then processed here at the Forest Service headquarters in Johnstown Castle, County Wexford. Complete documentation is essential for a fast turnaround, so make sure you supply your approved forester with everything needed to make the application. Well, we just received an application in from a farmer in County Wicklow to plant some land. Now, the approved forester has uh, ticked a number of boxes and filled in the actual application form. So part of, of my role and my job is to make sure that what's being ticked is actually correct. There are fisheries considerations boxes, there is um, archaeological considerations, there is also areas for environmental sensitivities. And from the application form here, everything is basically being ticked that there's no major problems at all, no environmental considerations to take into account. And I can confirm that everything that is being ticked is actually correct. So from a desk check exercise, I'm happy. And the next stage now is for me to go out on site and walk the ground and check that conditions are appropriate for the actual site in question. Good, good. Um, a few other things to look at on site. Okay. Uh, for example, we said, yeah, will, um, will the area meet the minimum area and width requirements? Yeah, it's a fairly big site. Uh, there's yeah. no problem there regarding the regulations. Yeah, I'd say it would produce a commercial crop of timber, no problem at all. 10% um, broadleaf content, the soil is good enough to take 10% broadleaf content. We put 10% in. Um, site sufficient access, yeah, not, not too bad. Um, looking at the plan here, uh, we can make some recommendations which might improve the plan later on. Back at Johnstown Castle, Philip's application is sanctioned. Conditions may be issued along with the approval and the Forest Service will ensure that any conditions specified have been met before payment of the grant. Only now that Philip has received written approval directly from the Forest Service is he free to commence work on the site. He must now explore the various options for getting the job done. There are a few different options open to you, all right, uh, depending on, on the time you'd have. Um, maybe you'd like to do the whole work yourself. There are four options for getting the job done. The option that suits you depends on your own circumstances. The do-it-yourself option involves the farmer undertaking the work himself with the help of a professional forestry consultant. The consultant assisted option involves hiring a consultant or contractor to do all or a substantial part of the work. And the self-assessment company option involves engaging a self-assessment company to do all the work, normally under a four-year management contract. The partnership option involves the landowner entering into a partnership with a management company for the life of the crop. Even now you might be forming an opinion about which option suits you best. But remember, regardless of which option you choose, it's your plantation and you should keep a close eye on its progress throughout the years. Six years ago, Nicky Kalman decided to plant 60 acres of his land and he chose the do-it-yourself option. When I decided to get into forestry, I had to, to have a look at what's it, what I was going to use. Was I going to use a contractor or would I do it myself? And it was basically a question about money. And consequently, I decided that I was going to subcontract every stage of it. And I was able to get out and barter a price and hammer out a, a deal with different people. And I got that. And there was a small saving by doing that. Now, I spent a lot of time in there myself. And at that time, I was still farming. I had 70 suckler cows here and there were long days and long evenings as well. But I stayed at it and thankfully I was able to get the work done in that first year. With, uh, mildew and oak. And uh, Nola, can I, can, I, can I ask you, how long is mildew going to be a problem here? Well, it's going to be a problem for another while anyway, that's one thing for sure. And the big problem is, OK, it looks bad, but it's going to kill off the terminal. Most farmers would know a certain amount about trees, but I was dependent on Chagisk and what Chagisk could teach me. And there are a number of courses running County Wexford, and I attended every one of those that I, was, that I could possibly get to. 
and I have to say that they were good. There were some days we were uh, brought out to uh, on uh, farm walks, out to farm wherever necessary, out to uh, plantations that were newly planted, other times with the shaping trees, and then there was weed control, which was an important part of it, and all of that was came, came through, through Chagisk in Wexford. The land use officer in Gorey was a man who was very useful to me in the, in the beginning and of course the forestry advisors and from day one I was able to depend on them and they brought me along and helped me over all the rough patches and thanks be to God I'm here, I am where I am. Like Nicky, you must be prepared to invest a lot of time learning about forest establishment and maintenance if you choose the do-it-yourself option. You may also have to organise bridging finance while you wait for payment of the grants. The advantages of this option, however, are that you are in full control of your plantation at all times and can maintain it to the very highest standards. When I was milking cows, I milked every cow. And I don't go along with the idea, you know, that 80% or 90% is good enough. I want 100% because anything less won't satisfy me. I want it all. Not everyone's circumstances will allow them to undertake all the work themselves. In Noel Kelly's case, the demands of a busy farm means that employing a consultant who will organise some of the work for him is a more convenient and practical option, while he still retains control of the operation himself. I had no expertise about forestry until I started this enterprise, um, so I needed all the advice I could get, and the consultant obviously had it. He was able to um, recommend species appropriate to the, the site and type of soil. Um, he was able to cut through the paperwork and all that for me as well. Well, the role of a consultant forester is to ensure that the establishment of the forest is done to a high standard and uh, to ensure that, that the farmer will receive grant payment. And when approval is gained, then I generally go about organising it, depending again on what the farmer wants. Some farmers would want me to organise everything for them, and other farmers might like to be more involved themselves and do some of the work themselves. The consultant arranged to have the digging and planting done, and I provided the cash for the trees and for the other things until the grants came up. That was about all. I, I'd overseen the work. I did a bit with it myself, put up some of the fences and drew in the trees for them and gave them help in every way I could. The advantages for the farmer in doing it this way is that they can have a choice of um, how much they want to spend on plants, for instance plant quality or plant size or um, they can choose to do operations in a slightly different way as long as it's up to standard um, but they can choose how much they want to spend really on the plantation um, and then they receive the grant directly themselves. They're in control of the, the finances of the operation all the way through. If you choose this option, you can really get as involved as you want. But if you prefer the consultant or contractor to organise the planting and manage the crop for the first four years, this option allows for that too. I'd undertake to uh, get the land approved initially, um, go through the procedure with the Forest Service. Um, then when the land is approved, I have a four-year contract. Generally, it's four years with the farmer. Um, I undertake the entire development, supply the trees, plant the land, um, do the fertilisation, fencing, etc, etc. So over the four-year period, it's my responsibility to provide the service to the farmer and basically the book stops with me as a consultant. So, depending on your circumstances, the consultant or contractor assisted option means that you can choose whether you want to allow the consultant to do the organising and maintenance or, like Noel Kelly, get very involved in the work yourself. The plantation is a year old. This year I hope to do most of the work myself in tandem with the consultant. I'll have him for advice on uh, fertiliser requirement, types of sprays, that kind of thing. But I intend to do the work myself. If you use a self-assessment company, the establishment and maintenance of the site is carried out under contract. But, in addition, self-assessment companies also have special authorisation by the Forest Service to carry out pre-planting assessments themselves. Self-assessment is different from the other options in that uh, to, to speed up the process, not all the applications that are sent in are inspected. 
so basically the, the self-assessment companies have to be prepared to stand over everything they do um, and all work you know has to be carried out by qualified personnel and if there are problems we have to be prepared to, to stand up and correct them. The self-assessment company undertakes to manage and maintain the plantation for four years and to pay for this service the farmer will mandate the afforestation grant to the company but as with all the other options the annual premium is payable directly to the farmer. We usually do a four-year contract with the farmer. Uh, first, the afforestation grant is paid, is mandated to us directly, and the maintenance grant is paid four years after. So the farmer is covered totally for four years, guaranteed that his premiums will come through. Uh, he has no waiting. Uh, the company must wait for the grant, but the farmer has paid his premium straight away. We deal with all kinds of farmers, dairy farmers, tillage farmers and dry stock farmers. It's vital that irrespective of the farm enterprise he's involved in, that he keeps an eye on his forest. He is the only person who can control trespass. And he is the only person who can see any other problems that arise from time to time. He can contact us immediately, anytime he sees a problem or thinks he sees a problem, and we will respond to that. Well, I was not in a position to do the work myself. There was one time I suppose I would, and even to be very, very hard to get a couple of men to help you at it, you know, at any money. And secondly, then, I hadn't the expertise which those fellows have. I can, I always said you can't beat a man at a practice and training. They do an awful lot of the overhead and the clerical work, you know, which I'd be slow enough to do now. I might have made them in the middle and at one time, but not now. Michael Devaney and John Ford also chose a self-assessment company when they decided to plant together with another neighbour. Well, there's no history of forestry around here now at all. Like, we didn't know what sown forestry consisted of. So we didn't know anything about it, and it was better to give it to a company. The self-assessment company get the, the grant for the actual work done on the plantation. The farmer gets the premium on a yearly basis. We were under no cost whatsoever. The company filled out forums, all this kind of thing. And I could get them paid for your land straight away. Well, there's a lot of advantages for the farmer in working with the self-assessment company. He, uh, he has continuity of service in that uh, the company is always there to answer any queries or deal with any problems if a forester for some reason may move on. They'll deal with all his paperwork if there's problems with his premium payments to have clerical staff on a day-to-day -day basis are working in a close relationship with the Forest Service on all of those issues. Farm Forest Partnerships involve a contracting company undertaking the total establishment and management of the plantation for the lifetime of the crop. This is the option that Larry Kiley chose when he planted his third plantation several years ago. My main objective was to make life as easy as I could for myself. I found with the, the, the first and second ones that there was a lot of work involved uh, of which I was not aware when I initially went in, when I initially planted them. So I decided that for the third time, I was learning as I went along, and I decided it's much better to get in the experts who can advise me, supervise, and in fact do most of the work, or do all of the work as far as the maintenance and uh, development of the crop is concerned. They advised me that we go into a diverse forest, uh, the mix they would advise me as to which they consider to be the best mix of trees and uh, they were going to maintain it and then eventually at a uh, clearfell stage then they were there and they were willing to market my product for me. After 20 years the premium is finished but the farmer then can draw down an annual payment from his tin crop. Now if he was doing the job himself obviously he'd have to he'd only get an income every four or five years but in this particular scheme, he gets an annual payment, which he's, they are extremely satisfied with. Now, at a clearful stage, which could be any time from 32 to 40 years, in many of these good partnership schemes, it will be only 30 to 32 years to develop the crop. We take 45% of the profits, and the farmer takes 55%. But he has got 80% of profits from tinnings before that, so I think he's in a, a lucrative position right along the line. With farm forestry, there are horses for courses. The different options available for planting mean that opportunities exist no matter what your circumstances may be. As well as running practical training courses and open days, Chagas and the Forest Service provide support to those considering a farm forestry enterprise and those who've already planted.
You might also wish to consult your local farming association, or if you're considering planting with other landowners, you could talk to your local forestry cooperative. Well, in the co-op movement, uh, our objective is to uh, um, in increase the uptake of forestry by farmers and to do that we, we go into the localities, we talk to farmers, we explain the, the concept of this forest programme to them and how it, how it may be of benefit to them because at the end of the day um, there's going to be a crop of timber to be sold and he will need assistance and advice on how to market that and get the best return from it. No matter which option you choose, if you are wise you'll closely follow each stage of the process. The very best plantations are those where the owner has maintained an active interest in his or her investment. A good farmer will always yield the best quality harvest. Forestry is no exception.